I used to think that once I got a high paying job in tech, my life would be set. I was so wrong about that. And in this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about it. What's up everybody, I'm Hello Eric Yu and welcome to my new and revamped channel. On here I'm gonna talk about things such as personal finance, entrepreneurship, uh, quitting the corporate nine to five, real estate and personal growth. So if any of that stuff interests you, please follow along. If none of the stuff I'm working on interests you, well that makes me kind of sad, but that is okay. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about my story and my journey so far, so you can get to know me a bit more. So I grew up in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where I went to high school at Forest Hills Northern. Back in high school, I was super focused on tennis and getting good academics. Like many of you out there, I'm sure you know your, your parents, people told you that you get good grades in high school, you go to a great college, and then you get that corporate nine to five for the rest of your life. At least that's what I was told, and I'm gonna to touch on that a little bit later in this video about why I'm no longer doing that. After high school, I went to the University of Michigan, go blue, and became a diehard Wolverine fan. In college, I really split my time across two places. One was in student organizations, and then the second was with my academic studies. On the organization side of things, I was super involved in the entrepreneurship scene, so Empowered Entrepreneurship was my, my main club I was a part of. And then on the academic side of things, I got my degree in computer science engineering. During my senior year, I got my software engineering job at Facebook. And honestly, it made me ecstatic, right? Cause you know, my parents had worked their whole lives and here I was right out of college. My first starting salary out of college was gonna be six figures and the same as what my mom was making. That was crazy to me, right? Cause this whole dream that, you know, they had for me of like going to college, getting that corporate nine to five job and working it like, I had made it, right? I had finally made it. I made it to like that top of the mountain that I was chasing for and honestly felt like a dream come true at the time. My first year at Facebook was exactly what I had hoped it would be and what I dreamed it would be. You know, I had great coworkers. I found a team that I really cared about. Uh, I was working on a great product. I had a lot of ownership on what I was doing. Like everything was going as well as it could. So I saw a really fast promotion from E3, which is that you know, junior level, base level engineer at Facebook to E4 within 12 months. So things were looking good. I was feeling positive, career was looking good. I was on the up cycle overall. And I was like, wow, I could totally see myself doing this for the rest of my life but that would soon change shortly after. After my first year, I started on my track from E4 to E5, which is senior engineer, and that's when I started to notice a pattern. Here's the dark secret of the corporate world. You always need to keep growing. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm all about having a growth mindset, but when you're in the corporate world, that is a never ending cycle of growth. There is no end goal in sight, you know? Once you get to a level, you get promoted, you're at the next level. At the next level, you've got a new set of expectations that you need to start meeting to get to the next level. And it just goes over and over again, right? My manager would tell me, hey, you know, you reach E4, if you uh, increase your impact, if you focus on growth, if you, you know, um, drive revenue for the company, then you'll get to the next level. Once you're at the next Next level, same thing. If you increase your impact, focus on growth, drive more revenue, then you'll get promoted again and again and again. Here's the problem with that though. I would never be enough. Or at least the corporate ladder was making me feel like every time I reached the next level, I was no longer enough again. It was a never ending push to become more and more and that just didn't really sit right with me, right? It's like that graphic that you see with the carrot on a stick and you're running on the treadmill, the carrot's in front of you and you just never reach that carrot. Every single time you get close to the carrot, the carrot gets put farther away again. That's how I felt about the corporate ladder. So fast forward a little bit, I'm starting to have these thoughts and I have my first bad panic attack in December or December, in November of 2019, right? I remember it pretty vividly. I was at work, I was focused on meeting some deadlines and uh, the way I felt it is my left pinky started getting kind of numb and I tried to ignore it and push through it. But at some at, at a certain point, it just became too much for me to ignore. So I packed up my bags, went home early. And once I got home, just everything hit all at once. Like the entire anxiety just kind of overwhelmed me. My left ear started ringing. Once that started ringing, my thoughts started panicking. My heart started beating really quickly. And I started to kind of like zone out of this situation, uh, which I now know as like depersonalization. But I, I remember I was just like, what the heck is going on with me? Uh, thoughts were like, you know, am I having a heart attack? Am I dying? Is this it? And it just caused more and more panic. Uh, so I sat down and, you know, after 30 minutes or so, it finally passed. So I kind of wrote it off as just kind of this weird one-off thing. But that was the start of many more things that I had to work through. And I went through a really tough period in 2020 right after that, 
where I went through maybe like a six to seven month period of absolutely intense anxiety, uh, which I'm not gonna go into too much in this video, but I actually did make a video a couple years ago about it, so check it out if you wanna hear more about that story. Anyway, after that panic attack and then after that rough period of six months in 2020, I realized that something had to change in my life. Right? I realized that I was either on a path that I didn't wanna be on, I was doing things that were stressing me out too much, there were things that were happening to me that I needed to address, so I started exploring other paths outside of Facebook. I looked into you know, drop shipping, fulfillment by Amazon, cryptocurrencies, day trading, before I finally landed on real estate. Now, the nice thing about the pandemic, especially when working in tech, is it really offered a lot of flexibility and we had a lot of remote work opportunities. And because of that, my girlfriend, who, uh, Wanda, who's also in tech, both of us were able to move elsewhere and that's when we started our real estate journey with house hacking. So for those of you who don't know what house hacking is, I'll talk about it in another video, but the basic premise is you buy a property, you live on part of it and you rent out the rest. We bought a property where we lived in a little guest house and we rented the main house on Airbnb and we were able to live rent free and cash flow about $3,000 a month, which was fantastic, right? We didn't have any rent and we were getting paid $3,000 a month from this property. That really opened my eyes to the power of real estate and I, I really haven't turned back since. So in the middle of 2021, I finally decided to leave my job at Facebook after my cash flow from properties was making a bit more than the living expenses I had at the time. So I felt comfortable that, hey, I could buy myself some time to go figure out what I actually want to do in life. It felt super gratifying, right? But at the same time, it was terrible. Terrifying. Now, why was it terrifying? Well, it's because my whole life I had followed a path that I'd seen everyone around me take. I saw my parents go through that corporate nine to five, my sister, brother-in-law, like all these people I knew, all these people I looked up to went down this path and they had a lot of success there. Here I was now venturing out of the, you know, tried and true path into a totally different space, an entrepreneur space where I had no mentors, no people I could really talk to about it. And I just had to figure things out. That was terrifying and that first two or three months after it was just rough. Um, I had lots of ups and downs. I didn't know what I was doing in life. There was way too many directions. And if you're in a similar spot, please reach out because that was a tough period for sure. Uh, Wanda, my girlfriend, could definitely attest to that because for those three months, I played so much of this Tetris game. <laughs> if you guys know what it is, it's called um, Tricky Towers on the Nintendo Switch. I played it so much that there were some high scores. I was like top 100 in the, the worldwide leaderboard. So. Um, you know, if you, I mean, I guess the moral of the story there is if you put your mind to something, you can accomplish anything. Anyway, so like I was saying, I went through lots of ups and downs when I first quit, but even to this day, I still go through a lot of ups and downs. And I think that's just kind of a natural part of being an entrepreneur. There's a lot more to my story, but I'm just going to leave it at that for now. If you're in a similar position and you know, you're just feeling like there's more to life than what you're currently living, please leave a comment. Please reach out. I really want to help people like yourself because I went through that same process and it's tough. It's very hard to take that step. There's a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety behind it, but I promise you when you take that step, it is immensely gratifying and rewarding. I'll be making one video a week on the topics I mentioned above, you know, about personal development, my, my journey in life, uh, real estate, leaving the corporate nine to five, those kinds of things. So if you're interested and you like this video today, let me know if there's any other topics or things you wanna hear about. I'm always looking for more ideas that I can uh, make videos about, so I'd love to hear what you guys wanna know. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time. Ciao.